Diners worldwide enjoy an ingredient that is culturally important, sustainable, and healthy, but is sadly absent from the cupboards of most Western countries. I'm talking about insects. Back in 2014, when we were filming in Peru, I had my first experience with bug eating when I tried a traditional delicacy, fried palm weevil grubs. They taste a little bit like squishy Cheez-It crackers, the white cheddar kind. Darn bad, right? It didn't go super great, but I thought I'd give him another try, this time with the Field Museum's executive chef, Mike, to guide me through. He's created some recipes specifically with insects in mind, so today we're in the Fields Bistro testing them out. And I'm not alone in embracing this new protein source. Joe over at It's Okay to Be Smart is tucking in too. So after you're done dining with us, head on over to his channel to check it out. We are here today with the Field Museum's chef, Chef Mike. Hi. This is exciting. I'm very excited We're, to be We've here. never done a food demonstration before. Excellent. And we've never done a food demonstration with bugs. Well, we have lots of bugs today. Yeah. So when we reached out to you to talk about like different dishes, were you thinking about pairing particular insects with particular flavor profiles? Well, I wanted to make sure that whatever we paired the insects with had a little sweetness, a little crunch, a little creaminess. So, you know, the insects, while delicious, didn't overwhelm yeah. Other flavors on the dish, or you know, people weren't scared away by the flavor of the insects compared to other yeah. things on the plate. Like it wouldn't be too overwhelming. Right. So, what is this first dish that we're having today? We have a very nice seasonal fall salad here. When I think of fall, you know, I think of things that go on your Thanksgiving tables: cranberries in here. We have candied pecans, some squash, and a little you know apple cider vinaigrette, things like that. So. We have ants and some ant pupae, mm -hmm. and then I think I ate something really similar to this when we were in Peru and had mixed feelings about oh, really? it. really? These are disgusting, actually. <laughs> but I'm excited to try it again and prepare it in a different way. We're just gonna, you know, sprinkle whatever amount that you feel comfortable with on top. Yeah. We can go together. All right, yeah, I'm excited about this. Yes. I gotta make sure I get one of, the, one of the beetles yes. in here. All right. Mm. It's not so bad. The beetle larvae offer like a, um, it's almost like a garnish like you would put on like a crouton or something. Right, it's a little or crunch. Like crispy onion pieces. Mm -hmm. I agree. I don't really get much of the ants. I think I might just do like forkful yeah. of ants right here. There's a lot of sweetness on this out, so you know, it balances out the earthiness of the bugs. Whoa! <laughs> oh no! Oh my goodness. Those oh, ants good. have way more flavor than you would think that they, they would. Do. It's like like little peppercorns. They're not yeah. spicy, but not it's spicy, like but that, taste, it's earthy. that element. Like mm -hmm. where these, it's you eat a lot and it's a very mild, nutty sort of flavor. And the ants are like, They pop. pack a punch. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I'm into it. Eating insects might sound unusual to you, but more than two billion people make eating insects part of their regular diet. And they eat more than 2,000 different species, with beetles and their grub being the vast majority of those. Most cultivated insects are raised on family farms, and some locusts and grasshoppers are even considered kosher and halal. So what is our next dish? Our next dish is gonna be uh, cricket gnocchi, little gnocchi with some cricket flour in them. Oh, cool. With a like a little mushroom sherry cream sauce with some mealworms. Yeah, this is like extra bugs. Extra bugs, again, extra seasonal, little fall flavor of the mushrooms and the sherry and, you know, potatoes. Yeah. And extra bugs. All right, gnocchi is basically a, a, a potato-based pasta and you start with roasting a potato mm -hmm. in the oven and then as soon as it's soft or cool enough to handle, you're just gonna peel it. Hot potato, it's not actually hot, hot, potato. hot anymore. No. <laughs> And once your potato is peeled, we're going to put it through a ricer, or in this case, I have a little cheese grater. It doesn't really matter what you do. You just want to grate it up a little bit so you, you don't get any lumps in your, in your pasta. When yeah. You just end up with a nice, soft, grated potato like that. All right, so now we have all our riced potato in the mm -hmm. bowl. It's nice and soft. It's room temperature. It's not too hot, not too cold. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add an egg. Okay. Add a little salt. Nice. And we're going to add our, our cricket flour. So it's quite a bit browner. Yes. Than regular bleached flour. Yes, you definitely see the see the color in the in the finished product too. Yeah. You see it in the gnocchi. When you're cooking with cricket flour, do you is it like a one to one ratio for what you can substitute? You don't usually want to put enough cricket flour to substitute like a whole cup because I think that'd be way too strong. So it's generally just to add a little bit of flavor to whatever you're making. Mm. All right. So now once this is um, kind of mixed in, we're going to add flour and the flour when you're when you're making gnocchi, there isn't any set rule of how much flour you're going to add. So different kinds of potatoes or different times of year might take different amounts of flour. So we're basically just going to add flour until we get a nice soft dough that's slightly sticky. Yeah. 
you have to have good intuition when it comes to the flour. Right, you can always add more. Start with a little, you can always add more. All right, now we have our, our nice dough. It's You can feel it's it's slightly sticky, but obviously not sticky enough to stick in my hands. Yeah. So then we're gonna put a little flour on our work surface here. Spread a little flour on. We're gonna take the dough a little bit at a time, maybe that much, and yeah. we're gonna roll it into a, a rope. Oh. You always wanna start in the middle and press out. This is so easy, I always, Assumed that making things like homemade pasta or gnocchi was like really complicated. Yeah, it's really it's really not that complicated. And then you just take a little paring knife and you cut up into little dumplings. And that's it. That's it. That's there it. you have it. And we have our gnocchi. All right, now that we have our gnocchi made, we're going to blanch them, which means blanching means we're going to put them in boiling water for 30 seconds to a minute. Oh. And in this case, we put them in the boiling water till they float. And we take them out. Put them on a plate or whatever with maybe a, a damp towel, and then they're good to go. And then you're going to saute them afterwards. Yes, then we're going to finish the dish. Great. Next steps, we're going to make our, our cream sauce, our sherry cream sauce, our mushroom cream sauce here. So I got a nice hot pan here. We got some onions, some garlic, some thyme, some rosemary, some aromatics in there, and we got some nice fall mushrooms here. We've yeah. got some king oysters here or wow. truffle mushrooms. We got some maitakis. We have some brown and white beach mushrooms. Oh, great. So this is a nice little variety there. You can use, really use any mushrooms you want. There's no right or wrong answer. All right, so I'm gonna add a little, a little bit of olive oil here. Get it nice and hot. I'm gonna add a little bit of butter. All right. Woo! Nice and hot. We're gonna add a little onion and garlic. A little toasty, get that a little fragrant. So we're gonna sweat this so out. Woo! About 30 seconds to wow. a minute. Wow! Especially when cooking mushrooms, you want a nice hot pan so the mushrooms actually get some color. All right, now we're going to add our mushrooms. We're just going to add a little bit, a little bit of each kind. Stir those around. Oh, it smells amazing. So after a minute or two, your mushrooms will get a little soft. Mm -hmm. We're going to add, we're going to add our uh, herbs here, our fresh herbs. we got a little thyme and rosemary. You hear crackle when you put it in the pan. Yeah. All right. Oh. Now we're going to add our sherry. Anytime you're cooking with alcohol, it's generally a good idea to take the pan off the stove. Yeah. Add your liquid and then put it back on the stove. Wow! And you'll see it'll flame up. <laughs> ah, that's so fun! So then we're gonna let our, our sherry reduce. That looks about good. And once our alcohol is burned off our sherry, we're gonna add our, our heavy cream. Oh, I love to see it. Mm -hmm. Look at that. All right. And once the cream is, this cream looks like it's reduced by about half, you can see it's thickened up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Then our sauce is good to go. Great. All right, so we're ready to finish the dish. Yeah. So we have a nice hot pan again. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in here. Throw our gnocchi in there. Ooh. All right. Put them sizzle, we're gonna let them get a little color. All right, now that our gnocchi are cooking, we're gonna add the insect part of the dish. <laughs> we're gonna toast up our mealworms. Nice. All right, look at those. There's some big ones in there. There's some big ones, they are. I mean, but is anything bad when it's fried? I don't know. Everything's good. And they're even popping. They're yeah. even popping and jumping in the pan. All right, once those have toasted for about 30 seconds to a minute, we'll, um, we're going to add our cream sauce. It has a really nutty, here. nutty aroma. Yeah. It smells delicious. Yeah, yeah, it does. All right. Oh, there it is. So is there a reason why you do the mealworms with the gnocchi and before adding them to the cream sauce? Well, generally, if the mealworms, if, you, if you're using them frozen or freeze dried or whatever, you just want to toast them up a little bit oh, okay. to give them a little flavor. So that otherwise they might get a little soggy. Right. All right. And then that's pretty much it. Oh, looks amazing. All right. Let me grab a slotted spoon real quick. The right utensil. Eating bug pasta. Yeah, it smells so good. I could just live with my face over this pan. Now we're going to ladle our, our pasta and our sauce and our mealworms. Yes. And our dish. All right, and we're just going to garnish with a little, I have chives, but you can use parsley or something green and we're good to go. Beautiful. Let's give it a shot. All, All right. right. Let's dig in. I'm excited. Got to make sure I get some mealworms mm. in there. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's amazing. That's pretty good. That is really good. I mean, yeah, they are like crunchy. I mean, if you think of them as like fried onions or something, it's just a nice um, yeah. texture contrast to the it rest is. of it. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that popped. Oh, I think it, it's just like sort of overcoming that first hurdle of being like, ooh, this looks like something that accidentally ended up in my dish versus something that I deliberately put in there. It works. And in the finished product, it, it all works together quite nicely. Yeah. And it tastes good. I don't even think of like the cricket flour being a part of it. So that if you couldn't like do the full on mealworms, you know, maybe start slow and 
and sure. integrate things like the flour. And if you are ambitious enough to make homemade pasta, you can also use cricket flour in that too. It doesn't have to be gnocchi. Yeah. Great. Insects are a more sustainable source of animal protein than conventional livestock. Conventional livestock consumes 8% of the planet's fresh water and 30% of its crops every year, while contributing 18% of the greenhouse gas emissions in the form of methane and carbon dioxide. Growing pork produces more than 10 times the amount of CO2 than growing the same weight in crickets. Insects need a lot less water in order to grow. Plus, eating insects produces a lot less waste. We eat 100% of the mealworms on our plates, but only 40% of a cow is consumed. Dang. So the previous dishes are not available for purchase in the restaurants here at the Field Museum. Correct. But there is something that is, yep. which is the next thing we're going to make, cricket cookies. Cricket cookies, yep. Yeah. So, so in addition to having a cricket in them, they're also made with cricket flour. That's correct. Great. And we're going to demonstrate how you can make them too. All right, so this is, you know, basically your basic cookie recipe. Nothing super complicated. We're going to, we have our room temperature butter. Nice amount of butter. Always. Yeah. <laughs> nice amount of sugar as well. This, this brings me back to my baking days. I was a, a baker um, for a coffee wholesale company. Oh, and really? we also had a store, yeah. And so yeah. I was their baker prep chef. So you can do this. Yeah, oh yeah, I love baking. All right, so we're gonna cream our butter and our sugar. I like to wait till all the butter and the sugar is on the side of the bowl, and I am confident that it has been sufficiently whipped. Yeah. So I think we're about there. Yeah. And then what I like to do, don't be lazy when making cookies, Always wipe down the sides of your bowl and make sure everything stays homogenized. All right, next we have our eggs and our vanilla. Add one egg at a time. So we're gonna add all the wet ingredients first and then the dry last, mm -hmm. and we're good to go. All right, once our eggs are sufficiently mixed, again, we're gonna scrape down the side of our bowl and then we're gonna add our dry ingredients. Mm -hmm. We have our flour or cricket flour and some baking soda and salt. There's not a lot of cricket flour. Again, if you want your cookies to taste more like cricket, add more cricket flour. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna add this slowly. So you're using it more like a spice rather than a, like a right. Right, I mean, it is, very, it is very strong. You can taste it, even that small amount in there. You'll be able oh, to yeah. taste it when you're eating the cookie. Yeah. All right, last but not least, we're gonna add our chocolate chips. Beautiful. Just, just till it all comes together. All right, and then we're good to go. Great. All right, now we're ready to scoop our cookies. I have these fancy things that professional chefs use. We call them, we can call them scoops, we call them dishers. <laughs> nice and easy, if you don't have this, you can obviously use a spoon. Yeah. But this. Makes it nice and easy. There you go. All right. How long do they bake for? Um, I like to put them in a 350 degree oven, you know, in the middle rack for about, I'd say 10 to 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, I usually set the timer for five minutes, then turn them, set it for another five and check them then, depending how you like your cookies. I like mine on the softer sides. So if you like yours a little bit more crunchy, yeah. certainly let them go for another five minutes so they get nice and brown around the edges. Then pull them out then. All right, and so you mentioned that you, you add a cricket Right after they come out of the oven? Well, I like to add the cricket. So we have some crickets here. We have some freeze-dried crickets. I like to put the cricket in generally two minutes before I take it out of the oven. Just press it down right in the middle. Mm -hmm. Then let it cook for another minute or two just so they set. Yeah. And then we take them out so nobody mistakes them for regular chocolate chip cookies. You, <laughs> right. get, a, you know, get a little extra bug in there. Yeah. And I want to make sure I get like a bite of this right? cricket in yeah, here too. too. What I, I'm going to straight up eat the whole thing. Look at that. Look at that beautiful cricket. Mm. Oh, that is a nice crunch. You do get a little bit, it's almost like if you had put in just a little bit of cinnamon, a mm -hmm. little bit of that cricket earthy flavor. Yeah, you get it at the end, a little bit at the end. Well, for the most part, it's just right. darn good cookie. So, Chef Mike, thank you so much for taking the time to show us sure. how to make some of these dishes. Thank I'm excited to go home and experiment. So. Me too. Uh, Noki was delicious. I'm going to make it tonight. I know. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Insects contain more good-for-you nutrients than conventional livestock, including lots of omega-3s, which lower cholesterol, making them a heart-healthy option. Insects are very distant relatives and aren't as likely to carry viruses and bacteria that we could catch by eating them. But heads up if you have a shellfish allergy. Because insects are arthropods like shrimp, you could be allergic to insects, too. Okay, so to wrap up our uh, culinary adventure into insect, food and drink. Um, we're here with Luce, who's the food and beverage director here at the Field Museum. And what are you gonna be making? I will be making a salted caramel scorpion cocktail. A scorpion cocktail. And it's just garnished with the scorpion. Absolutely. A little bit of crunch. Yes, absolutely. We are gonna put a little bit of crunch at it. We are using our very own rye. The Field Museum has its own branded rye whiskey. Absolutely. And I've never tried this, so I'm really excited to try it today. So what we're gonna do first, 
we're gonna go ahead and use our very own caramel sauce provided by Chef Mike. This okay. is his own recipe. Oh, wonderful. Cool. We're gonna go ahead and add some ice here. We're gonna go ahead and add some rye in here. Nice. And then we have Sorry. apple cider. Make sure it's nice and loaded. Nice. And we're gonna shake. I love that sound. <laughs> It's a nice fall color. Yeah. Ooh, I can smell that that rye in there too. You know, believe it or not, it's very smooth. Oh, is it? It is very smooth. Now our finishing touch. Our tiny little scorpions. They're pretty adorable. I was thinking they were gonna be like scorpions. <laughs> but they're just little things that they could just hang on the side of the glass. Oh, that one broke. Yeah. Not you just add that one in. I'll take this one. And these are cherry. cherries. cherries. Yeah. Nice. There you go. Great. All done. Cheers. Cheers. I'm gonna try to get my scorpion in my first. <laughs> oh, that is really good. It's just like a nice sort of like pre-dinner like cocktail, something you'd have in the fall. I'm gonna eat the scorpion. That's nice, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a little crunchy. So we don't actually make this in the building. Yes, this is actually uh, a partnership with Journeyman Distillery. This is one of three. We also carry vodka and we also carry gin. And they're all like inspired by the collections here. Absolutely. Like the people who are making these recipes come and they visit the herbarium and they learn about different flavor profiles. And I think that's really cool to inject that science into Absolutely. your craft, whatever you're doing. So even if you're at the bar and having a drink, you're still getting some education out of it. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Educational bar visits. Yes. <laughs> Of that. It still has brains on it.